What financial institutions overlook about the Telephone Consumer Protection Act can cost them. That's today on Risk Watch. Welcome to Risk Watch. I'm Taylor Reich. Despite the recent buzz about the TCPA and the FCC's ruling back in July 2015, some financial institutions have been neglecting their TCPA risk assessment and compliance measures, perhaps based on some faulty assumptions. Today we have a Firmex analyst, Eric Meadows, here to explain why you need to keep the TCPA on your institution's compliance radar. Eric? Thanks, Taylor. Financial institutions may have a variety of excuses for why they think they don't need to worry about their phone call compliance. And while it's true that maintaining perfect compliance can be very tricky given all the different types of communication technology we use, institutions should not make the mistake of thinking TCPA rules do not apply to them. Here are five things you need to know about the rule so you can keep your compliance up to date. First, let's talk about auto dialers. The FCC defined an auto dialer as a phone that has the ability to store, produce, and dial random or sequential numbers, even if that is not what the phone is currently being used for. They later expanded that definition to include any phone that could be modified or reconfigured to include those features, which means that if you have a working telephone at your financial institution, whether or not you think it is an auto dialer, the rule still applies. Second, despite the term robocall popping up repeatedly in the text of the rule, the rule applies to calls made by live persons as well. Third, don't depend on your customers to indicate what kind of phone they will be receiving calls from. The TCPA differentiates between calling a landline and calling or texting a mobile phone. Sometimes individuals will correctly mark whether their number is a home or cell number, but with an increase in consumers using their mobile phone in place of a landline, we can't depend on them to correctly label what kind of phone they'll be answering your calls with. If you are going to make assumptions about the types of phones your members use, it is safer to assume every phone you call is a wireless phone. The rule sets higher standards for mobile phones than landlines, so if you assume it is a wireless phone, you'll be covered. Fourth, you are responsible for any outside vendors who call individuals on your behalf. Unfortunately, many third-party contracts explicitly absolve the third party from liability for TCPA violations. Since it's almost impossible to monitor and control your outside vendors' interactions with your members and customers, you may want to examine your third-party vendor contracts and make sure they are not another risk point for TCPA liability. Fifth, all these same rules apply to sending out text messages. If you treat text messages as if they were calls, and direct your compliance measures accordingly, you'll be on the right track in protecting yourself from TCPA liability. As you can see, TCPA requirements are fairly involved and should be taken seriously and included in your risk assessments. Fines start at $500 per call, and many insurance policies exclude coverage for TCPA violations. If you do the math, you'll find that $500 per call starts to add up quickly. It's much better to be aware of the risks and take appropriate measures before the FCC comes knocking. Thanks, Eric. To learn more about the Telephone Consumer Protection Act or to contact Eric, please visit riskinbox.com resources. I'm Taylor Reich for Risk Watch. Thanks for watching. <laughs>